Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're here with the Sony PJ275 Handycam. This is a, a new HD camcorder from Sony and you know, more of a revision on prior ones. And we looked at about a year or two ago, uh, a similar model that had actually two similar models of this that had projectors on board, which would let you play uh, video files that the camera recorded onto a screen. And that was pretty cool, except you could only project what the camera had on board. This new one will allow you to plug stuff into it. So you kind of get a, two products in one where you've got a camcorder that also doubles as a pocket projector and it works adequately and we'll show you some uh, features of that. But let's take a look though at the hardware itself. So this is it here. Um, it doesn't have an automatic lens cap so you have to uh, flick the little switch here to open the lens up uh, and then you fold out the monitor like so and that will usually turn the camera on. I did find that uh, the camera will shut itself off after a certain length of time and that's all adjustable and whatnot but uh, when it does that uh, it's, it's often if you have things plugged in you got to unplug them and plug them back in to get things uh, working again. Uh, there isn't much for switches there's a little speaker here uh, most of what you're going to do is done through the uh, little joystick here. It's not a touch screen, so you've got to use the little control stick right up there uh, to move around the menus and everything. Uh, you can play back your footage by pushing this button here, and then to activate the projector, you hit this and then choose uh, whether you want to use images shot on the, on the device or plug in uh, an external device. And like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, we also have a door here where you can uh, plug in an M2 card from Sony, which is their proprietary memory format but it also takes micro SD cards too, so you have some choice there. Uh, you have two HDMI connectors. These are micro HDMI. You have HDMI out, which will plug into uh, television systems, and we're gonna plug it into our video system here in a minute. And you also have the input for uh, the projector too, which is pretty nice. Now, battery uh, wise, it's got a tiny little battery on board. It's kind of like, a, almost reminds me of the battery I see, I've seen on the Sony Action Cam. So um, this is it here, it's just a tiny little battery. You can, they don't make a higher capacity one, so you can buy more of these. They do offer a charger separate from the camera if you wanted to uh, charge one while uh, using another one. But I've been actually impressed with the battery life. It's been about what you'd expect from uh, you know, a camera of this size, maybe an hour and change a little bit, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, the cameras in, in this class, both from uh, Sony and Canon, have been getting much better about battery life, and this is certainly doing well. Um, I think this chassis is used on other models because it looks like you could fit another battery in here, but this door is uh, sealed shut, at least as far as I could tell. So uh, one battery, but you can buy more along with uh, a charger additionally. Now, another nice feature is that you don't have to worry about losing the charger because they have built it in with this little USB plug here. It's actually built into the hand strap. So when you want to charge, you just pop it out of the hand strap. Uh, they give you a wall adapter, a USB wall adapter, but you can plug it into pretty much any USB power source to uh, charge the battery. The camera will run off of that power source, but they do warn that uh, you might also see some battery drain depending on what you're doing, just because they may not be able to provide enough power uh, off of that USB cable. There's no headphone jack on board, uh, but you can uh, use RCA cables on the output or also plug USB in because on board there's eight gigabytes of memory that you can use uh, to extract things from it. So uh, that is the hardware of the camera. It feels pretty nice. It feels, you know, like a little, a little cheap. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's got like a hollow feel to it. And I think, again, I think this chassis might be used uh, on other models. So we're gonna plug this into the video system. We'll look at uh, some of the video quality and then we'll get to that projector. All right, we've got the camera plugged into our video system and it's zoomed out all the way. So you can see it's got a really nice wide angle to it. Sony says uh, this is a 29.8 millimeter wide angle lens. So uh, you get a good range of view. You're seeing a little bit of distortion at the top up there, if I can point uh, where the, uh, the wood uh, beam is. It's a little distorted as you get out to the edges, but um, again, it's you know, wide angle. So you'd expect it to be that way a little bit. When you zoom in, it gets, it gets better. Now there's zoom on this is a 27X optical and there's also a, it goes to 54x digital, and they say they're doing some processing on the super zoom. You really can't turn off that additional zoom, and you don't really know when it kicks on. So uh, this is it here. We're zoomed in all the way. It's also very hard to keep the camera still. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's kind of low light back there. It doesn't look so great in that digital zoom mode. And, again, it's hard to know exactly when the digital zoom starts and the uh, optical one ends. So I think it might be somewhere around the midpoint is where you uh, start to lose that uh, that zoom there. But um, outdoors, the camera you know, seems to do pretty well. Like other consumer cameras, it's a, a little bit uh, oversaturated, but you do have all the adjustments you can make on it to uh, get it into something a little bit better. It shoots 1080p at 60 frames per second, so it can really uh, keep up quite well. One thing I found interesting is that you can record in the high quality AVC HD format while also making an MP4 file at the same time. So you need a 
you know, fast enough card to do that, but most cards nowadays can uh, keep up pretty well. And I thought uh, that was kind of a unique feature. Low light is okay. You know, these cameras never really do all that great in low light. And I'm spoiled because I've got this really nice Nikon DSLR that can like see in the dark. Um, but you know, low light is, is acceptable as you saw with our water heater test. It's certainly getting grainy as you get uh, closer in, in in low light situations. But you know, for things around the house or something, it's probably passable. But I, I would love to see uh, greater uh, sensitivity and greater low light capability out of cameras in this uh, at this price point. But I haven't seen anything uh, better than this. And there's really, you know, they're all about the same as far as the low light goes. One thing I did like was really how nice the stabilizer on this works. These cameras are getting so good about stabilizing shots that sometimes even when I was handheld, it felt like I was on a tripod. And even when you're walking around, you don't get that, uh, that, that thud of the feet going. It, it looks really nice when you're moving around with it. And I think it's uh, gonna work great, especially outdoors if you're doing skateboarding or something high action. This will certainly keep up quite well with that. All right, so we've got the camera set up. I've lowered the studio lights a little bit and I uh, put the camera and this projection screen uh, in a darkened area of my basement here. So you get a kind of a sense as to how it works. Um, it looks nice. It, it reports as a 720p display uh, and there's very little latency. In fact, I hooked up my Xbox One to it upstairs and as you can see, as I'm pushing the button, everything's reacting very quickly. So there's no real uh, processing delay or anything else. It's really passing through the video. Uh, the display itself is, is not all that sharp. So you're going to see a lot of pixels and that sort of thing. But you know what, to like have a little tiny video camera that isn't all that expensive and be able to get something you could make a presentation on, I think is pretty good. I mean, this works really nicely. This is a keynote presentation I have to give tomorrow night. Um, and it seems to be doing quite well. That graininess you see, by the way, is my uh, studio camera here. It's an older camera. It doesn't do too great in low light, but you can get a sense uh, as to uh, really how nicely this projector does work. Again, you want to be in a really darkened room uh, because it's only, I believe, uh, 13 lumens. Now, most projectors that you're going to buy, even on the low end of the spectrum, are in like the 2,000 to 3,000 lumen territory, but they're also a lot bigger. They have expensive bulbs and everything else. This is a tiny little video camera that uh, they've added a really nice feature to, which again is the ability to get video into it from a computer, from an Xbox, from you know, an old game system, whatever you can get uh, HDMI over to this thing. And if it supports 720p, uh, you're going to get it through the projector. And I think it uh, really works quite well. The one thing it lacks is an external microphone input. And I used to, you know, knock every camera that didn't have this. For me now, now it's not as big of a deal because I record a lot now on a zoom recorder and then just sync it up in Final Cut Pro, which is what I use to edit. A lot of other uh, editing packages now will also do the automatic syncing. So not as big of a, of a gripe as it used to be, but it is nice to have that feature on a camera and this one doesn't have that. But, uh, but beyond that, it's a decent little product and it's a projector too. And I really think that's a cool combination. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.